around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. If you're one of the millions of Americans who are suffering from the minor pains of arthritis or rheumatism and so far haven't found any safe satisfactory relief, you should know about Mentholatum Deep Heat Rub. Mentholatum Deep Heat Rub. It's a greaseless, stainless rub that you massage into your aching shoulders, knees, hands, wherever and whenever you ache. Unlike taking tablets, you don't have to wait for your system to digest it to get relief. Mentholatum Deep Heat Rub soaks right into your skin. Within 30 seconds, it starts to stimulate blood circulation, warming and soothing painful areas. You'll get relief right where you hurt, so you can enjoy more of the wonderful things you like to do. Remember, for safe, effective, temporary relief from minor arthritic and rheumatic pains, use mentholatum deep heat rub often. It's greaseless and stainless, and has a fresh, clean scent. Mentholatum deep heat rub is available in both the United States and Canada. Get a tube today. Push that bottle down this way, Shave. You aiming to drink it all yourself? I'd have a fat chance with you in the same county. Here. Ain't nothing better to do in this forsaken town. I thought we'd be quit of it by now. We'll be moving along directly. Well, we ain't never lollygagged around like this before. We got a reason now. Yeah. I'll be back in a little bit. Where are you off to now? We're just over to that table. Oh, I see. Ain't that nice. You got any objections? Well, sure I have. You ain't got no business wasting time on a saloon gal. I'm not wasting my time. Ain't no woman living ain't a waste of time when there's work to be done. I'll see you later. <laughs> Evening, Miss Kitty. Oh, hello, Shave. I, uh, seen you come in. Sit down. Have a drink. Oh, I figure I've done enough drinking for right now, but I'd admire to talk for a spell. Well, that's nice of you, Shave. Most people that come in here don't have much on their minds except whiskey. <laughs> And they don't know what they're missing. Say, I've been around noisy trail hands too long to be taken in by soft soap. Uh, I ain't using none, Miss Kitty. No? That's for true. You say things pretty nice, Shay. <laughs> I bet the marshal has some nice things to say to you. Matt, <laughs> he wastes about as many compliments as he wastes bullets. You're pretty good friends, ain't you? You and the marshal. We've known each other a long time. Plain to see he thinks you're smart enough to talk to. Sure have seen him do it often enough. Well, sure. He has to talk to somebody, and I'm handy. Well, the way I look at it, he's a lucky man. Sure. I mean it. I wish I was going to be around permanent-like. I'd give him a run for his money. Are you planning to leave soon? Yeah, I'm pushing on to Texas in a day or two. As soon as I get a little job finished here in town. Uh, well, I'm kind of sorry to hear that. I've gotten kind of used to seeing you these last few days. I mean to see as much of you as I can while I'm here, Miss Kitty, if it's all right with you. Sure it is, Shay. Hi, right, Kitty. Are you ready? Oh, hello, Matt. Ready for what? Well, I told you I'd come by and take you along to supper, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Sure. Uh, Matt, do you know Shave Murdoch? Hello, Murdoch. 
I've seen you around the last few days. Yeah, I've been here all right, Marshal. Uh, all right, Kitty, let's go. I, I'm sorry to run off this way, Shay, but uh, I'll see you before you go, won't I? Sure you will. You'll be coming back here tonight, won't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess I will. Yeah. I'll be waiting. Uh, well, come on, Kitty. Oh, I'm coming. Goodbye, Shay. Miss Kitty. You sounded like you were saying your last earthly goodbyes in there. Well, it might seem strange to you, but there are folks who like to do things in a nice way. Who? That drifter? He's no drifter. He's in town on business. And he's a very nice fellow. All right, Kitty. All right, all right. Let's go eat. I'm surprised that you're able to eat at all, Matt. The way that tooth looks. I'm chewing on the other side. Hmm. Did you have a bad tooth, Matt? Oh, it's one of the worst I ever saw. Oh, yes. Oh, it's going to be quite a painful job getting that out. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a job. Uh, you might have mentioned it. But you had other things on your mind, remember? You going to pull it, Doc? Yes, I am. Tonight. Uh, around midnight, I expect. Midnight? That's a fancy hour for tooth pulling, isn't it? Yeah, it's a foolish hour, if you ask me, but the marshal is a stubborn man. What does that mean, Matt? Doc's the one who's making a story out of it. Ask him. What about it, Doc? Well, Matt's going to need a lot of liquoring up to deaden the pain before I start. Well? Uh, Matt won't do it like a normal person. He's insisting on going through it at night so that he can sleep it off by morning. Uh, stubbornism is immune. <laughs> the liquor won't taste as good in the morning, Doc. All right. We've agreed to do it your way, haven't we? Yeah, but you better start getting some liquor down here pretty soon because you're so stiff-necked it's going to take a while to get any effect. Don't worry, Doc. If we run out of whiskey, Kitty will send us up some more, won't you, Kitty? Well, oh, sure, Matt. Uh, do you want me to stay around, Doc? Maybe I can help hold him down. Well, now, maybe... No, you go along, Kitty. I'd be glad to help. You don't want to keep that nice fellow waiting, do you? Hello, Sam. Everything's going all right? Back so soon, Miss Kitty? Oh, I'm back. Hmm. Well, things going fine. Not much business, though. Kind of quiet. Uh, glad to see you back, Miss Kitty. Hello, Shay. Uh, I got a table over there. Care to sit down? Might as well, I guess. Oh, you, know, you sure do run a nice place here, Miss Kitty. Thanks. I ain't expecting to run into nothing like this in Texas. Leastways, I ain't expecting to run into nobody like you down there. <laughs> you suppose I will? Miss Kitty? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear you. Well, I was just talking about how I'm heading for Texas. Oh, yeah, Texas. Uh, do you know when you're leaving? It shouldn't be long now. I sort of expected the marshal would walk you back here. Well, he would have, but Doc thought that he should go right on up to his place. Was there something the matter with the marshal? Even lawmen get toothaches. Toothache, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, the doc's going to pull it for him, is that it? Yeah, just as soon as he gets enough liquor down him. <laughs> is he going to pull it tonight? Well, Matt wants plenty of time to sleep it off. Doc says he'll be groggy most of tomorrow as it is. Yeah, I guess he ain't going to be up and around first thing in the morning, then, huh? I don't think so. <laughs> well, now, Miss Kitty, that's interesting. 
That's mighty interesting. Oh, come on now, Shave. You can sympathize with a man who's got a toothache even if he is the marshal. Uh, you're right, ma'am. I give him my sympathy. Now, the next time you see him, you tell him that, huh? Here's another bottle, Doc. Oh, thank you, Jason. Thank you. So, here you are, Matt. Now, start to work on this one. Uh, yeah, sure, Doc. Well, man, it sure does take a lot to fill him up, don't it, Well, it's taking a lot tonight, but you can never tell about whiskey, Chester. Some nights you can just take two drinks, and it'll do something to you that... Well, you do things you wish you hadn't. <laughs> yeah, well, I've seen that happen. Yeah, I've seen it happen, too. To you. Well... Uh, Yes, sir, I guess you have. <laughs> now, go on, man. Go on now. Stop talking and drink it down. Drink it down. This isn't a social gathering. You know. <laughs> All right. All right, Doc. <coughs> oh. Well, this whiskey isn't good enough to drink like that. Well, you feel just as bad tomorrow as if it was. <coughs> go on, drink. Go on. All right. Chester? Yes, sir. How, how's the town? Oh, it's fine. Thank you, Mr. Jones. That's good. That's very good. You won't be sure and keep it just like that, that way. Huh? Oh, yes, indeed. I sure will. Because you're going to be in charge now for a little while. You know that. Yeah, you yes, know, sir. I, you know, I know that, that Mr. Jones. No, that's good. That's good. Because you, you got to remember... You remember that Zobie and folks like him want a marshal that's in charge uh, every minute. Oh, yes, sir. I sure do. It doesn't intend. take much to be a marshal. You, all you got to do is uh, care about certain things and not care about certain other things. Uh, you, you understand that, don't you, Chester? Oh, yes, sir. I certainly do. Well, I, I, I don't yeah. exactly understand it, Mr. Young, but the way you say it makes it... Seem like I understand. Yes, well, all right, all right, Jesse. Hey, help me get him over to that big chair. Just got to <laughs> care about certain things. Yeah, well, now, now, don't you worry, now, I'm Mr. Dillon. Don't, don't care about you certain. worry about a thing. Hi, partners. I'm going to explain the difference between ordinary stereo phonographs and Columbia Stereo One. Listen to an oil well on ordinary stereo. Now listen to it on Columbia Stereo One. Man, there's a real thousand barrel a day sound. The difference is Columbia's stupendous stereo projection, not just a couple of speakers shooting in different directions. Columbia gives you the real thing. Fills every inch of the room with all the sound and feeling of a live performance. And I mean a Texas-sized room. Man, ain't that the prettiest money-making sound? I, I mean, uh, get down to your Columbia phonograph dealer and ask. Demand to hear Stereo One by Columbia. Why, they start as low as $39.95 for portables, $129.95 for consoles. Somebody cap that well, we're losing a fortune. Ben, like I was saying, there ain't nothing so hard about running a marshal's office. That's so. Well, sure. Mr. Dillon and me was talking about it just last night. All you gotta have is a town to watch out for. Yeah. And you gotta have the kind of mind to watch out for it. Mm. Looks to me like a broom might come in handy, too. Well, now there ain't no call to make no remark like that. Hey, hey, Chester. Man. Howdy. Well, hello, Leander. Uh, oh, where's the marshal? Well, he ain't here right now, but I'd be pleased to help well, him. Well, you better find him, and quick. Well, now, I can't ride Do you know him. where he is? Well, sure I know where then he is. you tell him to come on down to the bank and to come quick. 
It's been robbed. What? Tom Johnson was shot. Oh, shot? Yeah. Just, well, oh, well, I guess I better get on down there and see about it. Well, ain't nothing for you to see, Chester. The bank's been robbed. The fellas who done it are off scot-free. The safe was blowed right open. You better go get the marshal, Chester. This is going to take more than a broom. All right, now, you... Yeah, you better go and get him, Chester. They're going to be sending out a posse without it. All right. All right. It... It sure don't mean much getting left in charge of a town. Doc? Well, Chester, you're out early. Where is he? Who? Mr. Dillon, of course. Why well, he's in there, sleeping it off. I got to see him. Ah, nah, Chester, there's nothing to worry about. Everything came out just fine. I know, Doc, yeah, but a I... A nice I, job. If I do say something, oh, it was Doc, a nice I job. Doc, I got to go in there. <laughs> go ahead, then, for heaven's sakes. He won't know anything about it. <laughs> He'll be asleep for some time yet. You don't understand, Doc. We got to wake him up. We're going to do no such thing. We got to, Doc. The bank's been robbed. Tom Johnson's been shot. Well, uh, oh. uh, Doc, this just ain't the kind of thing I can be in charge of. Well, the town just won't stand still for nobody but Mr. Dillon taking care of it. Oh. All right, Chester. Come on. We'll wake him. But it's an awful shame. What a head he's going to have. Matt. Oh, Matt. Uh, Come on. Uh, wake up. Uh, Come on, Matt, now. Uh, Come on, Ruth. Uh, 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 That's it. Hey, you better get me some water, Chester. Come on, Matt. Uh, That's it, now. Up. Hey, come on. Whoa, Awake. No, come on, bud. Here you are, Doc. Oh, thank you, Jesse. Oh, I hate to do this, Matt, but... Oh, what? What, what's the matter? Yeah, there. Come on, Matt. Now, wake up here. Uh, yeah, I'll help you sit up. Well, what's the matter? Yeah, Chester, get his feet on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, Doc. Just get that tooth out of there. Oh, the tooth. <laughs> it's all over, Matt. The tooth is out. Oh, well, then don't bother me. Let me go back to sleep. No, no, no. Don't let me stretch out again like that, Chester. Just splash some more water on <laughs> Doggone it, Doc. Leave me alone. I, you? I'm sorry, Matt, but you've got to get up. What for? Matt, the bank's been robbed. Tom Johnson's been shot. What? What? Oh, well, where's Chester? I'm right here. Oh, you know what happened, Chester? Well, sure I do, Mr. Dillon. I found out about it all right. I, I figured it was my job. Oh? Uh, well, you see, them two fellas, the ones that's been hanging around the Long Branch, that friend of Miss Kitty's and, and, and that other one? Yeah. Well, they broke into the bank early this morning. They they blowed the door clean off the safe. Well, well, what happened to Tom Johnson? Well, he seen him riding off and he started hollering and they shot him. He's dead, Mr. Dillon. Oh. All right, Chester. Let's go. Chester, yes, want me to fix your powder for your head, man? No, thanks, Doc. I'll make you all right. It'll make you feel better? I'm not going to feel better until I catch up with those men. And now here's a message from the watchmakers of Switzerland. Swiss vacation. Well, you know, Win a fabulous vacation for two in beautiful Switzerland. Enter the Swiss Vacation Contest. It's easy. Nothing to buy. Pick up a free entry plank at a jewelry store or other store that sells quality watches. Then in 25 words or less, complete this statement. A quality watch is the best value because there are 1,000 prizes. <laughs> First prize, a 21-day vacation for two in Switzerland. You fly deluxe Swiss Air both ways. Visit many colorful places. All expenses paid for two people, plus $500 extra spending money. Second, third, and fourth prizes, 15-day Swiss vacations for two. Also, four mink stoles, eight Bolex movie cameras and projectors, 12 Hermes typewriters, 160 $100 watches, 812 gala assortments of Tobler Swiss chocolates. Enter the Swiss vacation contest today. Free entry blanks at your jewelry store. How are you feeling by now, Mr. Dillon? Any better? I feel all right, Chester. 
You sure there ain't nothing I could do for you? I could tote some fresh water from that stream up no, there. No, thanks, Chester. Oh, I'd just be proud to do it for you. Chester, the sooner you stop acting like a nursemaid, the better I'll feel. All right, Mr. Dillon, I was only trying to help. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Yes, Chester. Sure was a lucky thing that Miss Kitty and that shave fellow was friends now, wasn't it? Yeah. Murder and bank robbers, a nice friend to have. Oh, no, 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 Miss Dillon. Now, you know I never meant nothing like that. Well, what did you mean? Why is plain to see? Well, point it out to me. Well, Mr. Dillon, if Miss Kitty hadn't been so friendly like at him, we wouldn't have known which way to come. Yeah, they were seen riding out of town this way, weren't they? Well, sure they were, but what that shave fella told Miss Kitty sort of confirmed it, you might say. Well, what did he tell her? Well, she told me that this fella shave kept telling her about how he was heading for Texas as soon as he pulled off a big deal. Miss Kitty wanted me to be sure and tell you that. Well, you waited a while to mention it, didn't well, you? Yes, sir, but with the rush and bustle and all, I kindly forgot, I guess. Anyway, I guess it don't matter so much at that. They, they left us a clear trail. Well, that might matter. Now, hold up a minute. The trail leads over to this stream, all right. Well, they could have just got thirsty. It's awful hot out here. I'm going to look around a little. You find anything over on that side? No, nothing. The trail leads up to the stream, but it doesn't lead out again. You know, if they were really going to Texas, they'd have gone straight on through. But they didn't. So they must be trying to trick us, Chester. They probably doubled back. You reckon all that Texas talk was just meant to fool Miss Kitty? I think it was meant to fool somebody. I was hoping I'd find you here, Doc. Oh, good morning, Kitty. Good morning. Sit down, sit down, have some breakfast. Yeah, thanks, Doc. A little late in the morning to eat, but uh, I've been busy. Have some coffee? Yeah, please. Mm. Well. That was a terrible thing about Tom Johnson. Yes, it was, Kitty. From what they tell me, he lived long enough to suffer pretty bad, too. Oh. Wounds in the stomach can be very cruel. Yeah, Doc, I know. If I ever find out who the blabbermouth is, I'll be tempted to pull all of his teeth and without any whiskey. Blabbermouth? Well, there had to be one, didn't there? It's much too much for a simple coincidence. What do you mean, Doc? I mean I'd like to find the big talker that let those outlaws know that Matt was going to be full of whiskey yesterday morning. Well, his tongue must be hung in the middle. I can't understand it either. You can't. No, I can't. We tried to keep it as quiet as we could. Why, Matt even insisted on my pulling the tooth at night so nobody knew about it or get any crazy ideas. And now Tom's dead and the bank's been robbed. Oh. How awful. Uh, Matt will find out someday. <laughs> don't you worry. I don't envy whoever it was. No, Doc. Neither do I. Doc, when do you think Matt will be back? Well, I understand he came in late last night. I haven't seen him, though. Why didn't you tell me before? He didn't ask me. I'll see you later, Doc. Can I come in, Matt? Uh, sure, Kitty. Come on in. Sit down. Um, yeah. Something on your mind, Kitty? Well, yes, there is, Matt. 
There's something I want to talk to you about. Oh, is this an official visit? Well, in a way, I guess it is. I'll be glad to help you. That's, that's just it. Oh, Matt, I've been such a fool. It's all my fault. What's all your fault? Everything. Well, that covers a lot of territory. You know what I mean, Matt. Getting taken in by that shaved Murdoch. Well, I will admit you're generally a better picker than that. I just kept listening to him talk. And I'm the one that told him, Matt. I told him about your tooth. Yeah. I figured it might have been you. And I'm the one that was so taken in with all this talk about Texas. I sent you off on a wild goose chase, Matt. They must be safe home by now. Oh, Matt, I'm sorry. I truly am. Oh, don't worry about it, Kitty. To tell you the truth, I was suspicious of that Texas talk. Well, it's too late now. I'm ashamed of myself. Well, all he wanted with me was to find out about you, and I told him. I even helped him get away. You ought to lock me up, Matt. Well, I don't think the town would stand for it, Kitty. What do you mean? I don't think they'd like me to lock a man and a woman in the same cell. Matt, oh, what? <laughs> I've got shaved locked up back there. You got him? Yeah. We got them both, Kitty. We left the other one buried out on the trail. I don't understand. Well, they let us on away and then double back. Just like they led you on with the Texas talk. I don't see how... Well, you don't have to, Kitty. And will you promise me that you won't try? Matt. Just leave the track into me, huh? I may not do things in a nice way like Shave does... And I'm a better man on the trail. Oh, man. Oh, come on. I'll buy you some dinner. Recording star Mel Torme. It's terrible trying to sing with a bad cold. So I always take four way cold tablets to relieve cold miseries fast. Good idea. Tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four way fastest acting. Four way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains, headache, reduce fever, calm, upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When you catch cold, try my way. Take four way cold tablets. The fast way to relieve cold distress and feel better quickly. Four way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. To get rid of embarrassing dandruff in three minutes, change to Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep unsightly dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair. Rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute, then rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch and embarrassing dandruff is gone. At the same time, Fitch can brighten hair up to 35%. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke.